Hallelujah. We are live. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining on. This is Prophetess Double Grace, and I'm so excited to be here with each and every one of you in the presence of the Lord. So whether you are watching on YouTube or if you are watching on Facebook, whatever platform that you are watching, please be sure to share, to like, and to let someone know that can let someone know that I am live right now. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining on. Thank you for joining on. God bless you all that is watching on YouTube. And to those of you that are watching on Facebook right now, or whether you are watching the replay, I would ask for you to share and to please let somebody know that I am live right now. God bless you. God bless you. Good evening to each and every one of you. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about something that the Lord Jesus has put into my spirit for every single one of you. And I pray that as I teach tonight, that the Lord will be glorified. Amen. So again, saints of God, wherever you are watching, um, number one, please let me know where you are watching from. And number two, share with your family, share with your friends, share as with as many people as possible, because tonight is going going to be amazing. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining on. Thank you so much for joining on. If you are watching on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe, number one. And number two, please be sure to like as well and to share this video with your family and with your friends. Somebody that you know will be blessed through this teaching. Amen. God bless you all. I see more people are starting to get notified that I am live. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please share. Please like and please let someone know that I am live right now. Tonight, I'm going to be teaching on the purpose of pain. And if you are hopping onto this live stream, there is something that you have been going through in life. And there is something that has been uh, 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 something that has been difficult, something that has been tough, something that you've just been having to endure. Amen. And you may not know the reason why it is uh, the purpose of why you're going through that very thing or why it is what it is that you're going through or why you are having to go through that thing. Have you ever asked yourself the question, why me? Why is, why is it that uh, I, I'm the person that has to go through this? I'm sure that there are other people in the world that have gone through the same issue that I'm going through, but the people that I know and the people that I'm affiliated with and the people that I'm connected with, my own family, my own friends, I've never seen nothing happen like this before. And so I know that what it is that, that, that I am going through right now, there's a purpose to it. There is a reason for it. And so tonight I'm going to be talking about the purpose of pain. And I'm telling you guys, saints of God, there's been many times where I just got on my knees and I said, Lord, why do I have to be the one to go through this? This is something that I've never heard of. This is something that I've never even seen. This is something that I didn't even know could happen. Lord, why do I have to go through this? Amen. And so again, saints of God, wherever you are watching, whether you're watching on Facebook or whether you're watching on uh, YouTube, please share and please like with your family and with your friends. And wherever you are watching, please let me know where you're watching from. Tracy Hortthorn says she is watching from New York. Tracy, New York is blessed because of you. Well, I want to get started, saints of God, because I am elated for what it is that the Lord is going to do in your life, to you, through you, and with you. I'm a person that believes in the power of prayer. I go by this saying, if you are prayerless, then you are powerless. But if you are prayerful, then you are powerful. Amen. Father, I thank you for this very, very word, which you have deposited into my spirit for your people. I pray that by reason of this message that you have given to me, O oh Lord, that your sons and your daughters will be edified in your word. They will be edified in you and they'll be edified in what it is that you have called them to do and the reason why you have sent them here on this earth. May they come to the knowing and to the understanding of the purpose of pain and why it is why they have to go through what they are going through. Lord, I love you. I honor you and I glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So tonight, saints of God, I'm going to be talking about the purpose of pain, the purpose of pain. 
Now, many of you that is watching this teaching right now, there is something that you are going through. And again, as you are joining on, as you are hopping on, please share with as many people as possible. Amen. Now, each and every one of you is going through what I like to refer to as a set of experiences, a set of pain. Amen. And in that pain that you're going through, there is a lesson in which the Lord wants to teach you. But the quickness in which you receive that lesson is in the quickness in which you embrace that pain. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. The quickness in which you receive that lesson is determined upon the quickness in which you embrace that which you are going through. There is a video I made and and there, there were people that were commenting or or had their own opinions about this video I made. And and I and in this moment, uh, because I want to, I just want to clarify on what I was saying because it furthers my point on the purpose of pain. And in this video, I was speaking on accepting reality. And when one fails to accept reality, it is because their hope is in something that God is far from. Now it's painful, oh hallelujah, to accept reality. Now the part of accepting reality that I am referring to is when people show you who they are, people that you've loved so much, people that you would do anything for, people that you put your life on the line for, people that you went the extra mile for. When those people show you who they are, you have to believe them. And that's something that is so painful. When somebody who you support says they don't support you. Believe what they say. Don't try to convince them of what it is that God gave you. Don't try to get them to believe of what it is that the Lord Jesus has given unto you uh, before the foundations of the earth. If they say they don't believe, don't get them to believe. If somebody says that they don't see where you're going, don't try to sit them down for lunch, for brunch, for dinner, for breakfast, whatever it is, and try to show them the vision. Some people, when they say, I don't see you, it's them blatantly saying, listen, I'm not called to you. And that is a reality in which many have to accept, but it's a painful pill to swallow. It's something that you just have to gulp and you just have to say, okay, I understand. Okay. I get it. Jesus says this. Jesus says this so eloquently. He says to his disciples, oh, thank you, Jesus. He says to his disciples, if you are not received, wipe the dust off of your feet. You open up the door for pain and which I would call uh, unnecessary pain to enter in when you try to get people to receive you that I've already shown and I've already said out of their very own mouth that they don't get you, that they won't receive you. And many times what we do in our human nature is we try to get people to understand us. And I want to talk to ministers right now. If you are called to do the work of God, being misunderstood is inevitable. People will come and people will say, I don't understand you. I don't understand a word that you're saying. And you can say it as plain, as plain as can be. You, you can say it as simple, as simple as can be. And they will still not get a word that you're saying. It's an indication that you are not called to them. Saints of God, the purpose of pain is not so that uh, 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 it, it doesn't work in our favor, but the purpose of pain is so that which pains us works in our favor and it leads us and it directs us to where God is and where God has always been. Oh, hallelujah. We go through pain so we can get on our knees and we can say, Lord, they showed me who they are. 
but it really hurts me. Lord, they, they, they said they don't believe me, and that's very painful. Lord, they said that they don't see me, and that's really painful. Lord, they said that I will never go anywhere, and that's really painful. Lord, they said that I'm not going to make it far, and that's really painful. Lord, they said that I will never get out of the valley of the shadow of death, and that's very painful. So the purpose of pain is not to complain about that which is paining you, but the purpose of pain is so that you can get on your knees to the Lord Jesus and and say, Jesus, this hurts. But I know that in your presence, in your presence, there is life. In your presence, there is freedom. In your presence, there is truth. Oh, hallelujah. Life is to be lived. But life is not absent of pain. We can only appreciate the fullness of life and that which the Lord has given unto us here on earth when we go through something, gratefulness, thankfulness is the very action which opens up the door for prosperity. But that gratefulness and that a thankfulness that we are supposed to have within our hearts and within our minds may not be there because of the absence of pain. Pain will open up your eyes and make you realize, oh, the little things in life that, that are to be appreciated. Pain will open up your heart to the one that may seem so unlovable. And, and, and when you open up your heart to that person that may seem so unlovable, you'll realize the reason why they seem unlovable is because they do not know how to embrace that which they are going through. And because what they, are, what they are going through is very tough, they've become very mean. Pain will give you compassion for the lost. Pain will make you see life from a different lens. Pain will cause you to get on your knees and say, oh Lord, I need you. We pray for oil, but an olive oil in itself must go through pain. It must go through a crushing. It must go through a shaking. It must go through a breaking. So now that oil can be released. We want the glory of life. We want the good things in life. You want the marriage. You want the house, you want the prosperity, you want the business, you want all of those things except for the price that you must pay in order to get that. The price one must pay. Pain will also teach you this very thing. When you receive it, it won't control you. Because if we were to receive a great blessing from the Lord Jesus without pain, saints of God, we would forget about the Lord Jesus. But it is by reason of pain that we remember the Lord Jesus when we do have it. When we have it in our hands and when we have it in our lap. Where you say, oh, God, I, I thank you for all of this stuff. God, I really thank you. And I didn't expect you to bless me the way in which you have blessed me. But there's one thing that I've come to realize, that everything that I was waiting for is not greater than you. The pain in which you have to go through right now is so necessary. Oh, hallelujah. It is so necessary. It's so necessary. The quickness in which you receive the blessing of God is the quickness in which you embrace what you are going through. David said this, yea, though I walk. He didn't say I will crawl. He didn't say, I will run. He didn't say, I will jog. Some of you want to get out that pain very quickly, 
And some of you just fall in, in love with the pain that you just start crawling in it. You're moving so slow. Or, 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 or you, 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 instead of being thankful to the Lord Jesus for getting you through that very thing, for being with you in that very pain, you're complaining now. And now you're starting to crawl. Now you're going very slow. Now nothing is happening. And some of you just stand still. You're standing still in the valley of the shadow of death. But David said, yea, though I walk one step in front of the other, one step, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Left. I'm going, I'm walking, and I'm moving. I'm walking, and I'm moving. It hurts, but I'm walking. It doesn't feel good, but I'm walking. I got to endure this, but I'm walking. I'm not running. I'm not rushing. Because if I rush out of this season, I won't be sustained when, when, when I receive all that God has for me. I won't last when I receive all that God has for me. I won't have stamina when I receive all that God. If, 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 if any of you work out, you go to the gym or anything like that, there are certain uh, if you, it, depending on how you want to build your body, right. And how you want your body to look, there are certain workouts where you're just like, okay, let's go. Boom, 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 boom. But then there's certain workouts where you got to go extra slow and then, all right, extra. And it's so painful when you got to take your time. Listen to that. It's so painful when you have to take your time. But while you're taking your time, you're building your core. You can't go too slow and you can't go too fast. You got to go at a pace that works so that your bicep and your tricep can build up and become more muscular and your quads and your hamstrings can become stronger and your core can. So, so when you're lifting or you're working out, the, the goal is not to just boom, 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 boom. And you didn't do anything. There's sometimes when I go to the gym and I see people and I'm looking at them and I'm just, I'm like, their form is completely off. Everything is so wrong. And they're just doing the set so fast, so fast, so fast. And I'm looking at them. I'm thinking, I'm saying, hey, they want to get fast results, but those results are not going to last. And that's many of you right now. You want to run out of this pain. But David said, yea, though I walk. Yea, though I walk. In life. Is like going up a hill and walking up a hill is very painful. You ever walked up a steep hill? It's easier to run up a steep hill than to walk up a steep hill. So David said, yea, though I walk, not too slow. I'm not crawling, not too fast. I'm not running, but I'm walking. And then he says, Hallelujah. And then he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So pain, what you are going through, will expose what you are afraid of. When you are in pain, you will have to confront what you fear. Because the Bible says, were to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing by any means can hurt us, harm us, or injure us. And then I break that scripture in with, uh, 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 God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound, disciplined mind. Some of you today, you're like, you pray, you do all of these things, you're going through praying, you do all of that. But yet, you're afraid to confront that which is paining you, which comes from your mother's side or which comes from your father's side. You cannot, I'm telling you, saints of God, there are certain spirits 
that you will have to actually meet, meet and overcome them to get to the next level of life. Some of you say, oh, I'm not doing nothing like that. Get somebody else to do it. And that's how a lot of people are. And that's how the children of Israel were pertaining to uh, 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 Moses. They said, yeah, yeah, you go up, you go up for us. You go up for us and, and we'll stay down here. Your ability to face what you are going through and what you are fighting and say, God, this thing, I'm not even going to lie, Lord. I'm trying to be, oh, yeah, I don't fear nothing. I don't fear nobody. I'm a warrior. I'm a soldier. But God, let me tell you that I actually fear this thing right here. I see so many Christians, oh, I'm a soldier. I'm a warrior. But then when they're going through pain, now all of a sudden they start, oh, where's the alcohol? Where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the porn? All of this stuff. So pain will expose you and what you fear. And in pain, you will have to confront that. You will have to, and, 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 and it, can, it can be something very simple or it can be something very spiritual. It can be something very simple where you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, listen, this person that I see today, I will not see tomorrow. You will change. You will become better. You will become greater. Or it can, it can even be a thing where you encounter the spirit that has caused the, the, the woman in your family to divorce, that has caused the woman in your family to not have children. Oh, hallelujah. So he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And now this boldness in which many have, it's not, it's, 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 it's a false boldness. And a lot of people operate in false boldness. Where they're like, yeah, let's go to war. Let's fight. Let's do this stuff. But then when it actually comes time to real spiritual things, they punk out of it. This boldness is in the knowing God is with me. I'm going through pain. But listen, God is with me. The Lord Jesus is with me. And because of the Lord Jesus being with me. Oh, I'm going to get through. Oh yeah, I'm going to make it through. I'm going to get out of here. This person may have not made it out the hood. This person may have not made it out the projects, but listen, I'm getting out. I'm not getting through because of what I can do. I'm getting through because Jesus is standing with me. Because the Lord Jesus is with me. In fact, even when I'm in the valley of the shadow of death and I'm like, Lord, I don't even know how I'm going to get out of here. He calls my name and I say, yes, Father. And he says, follow me. And I go to right where he's at. I'm getting out of here. It's painful. What I'm going through, it's, it hurts, but I'm getting out of here. This too shall pass. I'm getting out of here. Pain is an indication that victory is so close. Pain is an indication that increase is so close. Some of you say, I'm just going, I'm, it's thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. But you saying it's thing after thing after thing is an opp opportunity for you to say, and those things that I'm going through, it, it opens up the opportunity for me to keep thank, thanking God and thanking God and thanking God and thanking God. Lord, another thing happened, but I thank you again. Lord, another thing happened, but I thank you again. Another thing, and I thank you again. 
So instead of saying, oh, it's just thing after thing after thing, just thankfulness after thankfulness after thankfulness after thankfulness. It hurts, but I'm thankful for it. It don't feel good, but I'm thankful for it. I don't like what I'm seeing, but I'm thankful for it. I don't like how they're treating me, but I'm thankful for it. I don't like how, I, I, I don't like that people are leaving me, but I'm thankful for it. At first, I thought that life was happening to me. But then when I got on my knees, I realized that life was happening for me. At first, I thought that they were leaving me because something was wrong with me. But then I got on my knees and I realized that they were leaving me because my anointing was increasing. At first, I thought that they were talking about me because I did something to them. But then I realized when I got on my knees that they were talking about me because I got closer to Jesus. At first, I, 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 at first I thought that I wasn't good enough. But then I realized when I got on my knees that I just changed, that God, I, I elevated. God changed my countenance. God changed my language. God gave me a new name. God changed who I am. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The purpose of pain is so beautiful because it leads us closer to the Lord and, 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 and it gives us a greater desire and wanting to hear his voice and wanting to hear his direction. Imagine being in pain, but being lost. And this is what people in the world go through. They're in pain, but they're lost. They're in pain, but they're wandering. Oh, hallelujah. They're in pain, but they have nobody to go to that has all answers. That's all knowing. Muslims are in pain today and they're going to a God, their God that does not answer. Buddhists are in pain and they're going to a God that does not answer. But we, as the children of God, we will go through life. We'll be in pain. But our Lord answers. He comes through. He does miracles. Oh, hallelujah. He comes through. He never fails. He never stops. And he doesn't prove himself so that we can, oh, wow. He proves himself so that he can be like, yeah, let me just, let me just remind them. Let me just show them. Just in case they forgot. Oh, hallelujah. The purpose of pain. The purpose of pain is for, the, is for the Lord to be glorified through our lives. When you remove yourself from yourself, your greatest desire will be for the Lord to be glorified. When you remove yourself from yourself, all you will want is Jesus. When people are talking about you, there'll be no desire. Oh, let me let me text them. Let me let, let, let me give them a piece of something. No. They ain't, they ain't never had nobody to really tell them like it is, but they found the one. <laughs> they and some of you are like some of you. Try, listen, I will raise my hand. I will raise my hand before I will raise both of them. I was that person. Oh, yeah. Let, let, let me. Oh, oh, they want to do that to me. Oh, OK, OK. But Exodus 14, 14 says this. The Lord shall fight for you, fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Do you realize the maturity and the discipline it takes to hold your peace while you're in pain? They're talking about me, but I'm going to hold my peace. They saying what they're saying, but I'm going to hold my peace. Because when you hold your peace, number one, you realize that any little thing that comes out of your mouth 
has the possibility of, it, ha it has a great possibility of happening. Nine out of 10 times, it will happen to them. Mastery of self begins by giving yourself to the Lord Jesus. And that's not just through the confession of your mouth and belief in your heart. That's through giving up everything that you thought you knew. Giving up every idea that you created in your head. Oh, yeah, when I make it, I'm going to be with this homie. I'm going to be with this person. Yeah, when I make it, I'm going to see this cousin. I'm going to see saints of God. I'm telling you right now. It may not be that. Those same people that you say you're going to look out for. Maybe the people that will switch up on you when you rise up. So this is why all of our trust, we go through pain. So all of our trust can be in the Lord Jesus. You get, and any blessing is a big blessing. But God blesses you with some money, and now all of a sudden people start, oh, you think you all that? What? I thought we was cool. Oh, hallelujah. All you got to do is hold your peace. What people are talking about you. People could say, oh, look at that. Look, look at her. Look at him. The whole town knows about what you're going through. You walk in a room and it gets quiet. And now you know people was talking about you. You walk in a room and people just staring at you. All you got to do is be quiet. You don't got to go there, go out. And, who, what you looking at me like that for? And some of you think that it's boldness to be like, you guys are looking at me like that. Watch what God does. Watch what God. And this is how many of you go. Watch, oh, you about to see what God does. And God are looking at you like, child, calm down. Hold your peace. Don't say much. When people say, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. God is so good and he has been so good to me. Somebody comes in, you, you, you know, I um, so-and-so in church was telling me that what was going on with you. Somebody that you used to be cool with, you're no longer cool with. There's somebody else, somebody else comes out of the corner like, you know, I always thought, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. I used to be cool with them. I don't really want to get into that. Please, could you respect the fact? Could you please respect that? Yeah, but be like, oh, okay. All righty. All righty then. That's exactly what people will do. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. People could say the worst things. The worst things about you. But God says that he will fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And when you hold your peace, it, it, and even that in itself is painful. It's hard to not say nothing when you could just rip it off, rip it apart. Don't be like uh, uh, Elisha, Eli, Eli, what's Elisha in the Bible, where the kid children go, bald head, bald head, and he brings a, a beer to come and uh, 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 attack them. Don't be that. Don't be that person. And some of you say, well, look, they did it. They did it. It's in the Bible. They did it. But was it, was it morally correct?
Some of you go like that to, to, to own your own brother and sister in Christ. Your own brother and sister in Christ talks about you and you're like, oh, touch not God's anointed. Oh, watch what's about. And you're expecting, you're expecting a curse to touch them. Saints of God, what kind of love do we have? What kind of love do we have? While you're keeping your peace, while you're making the decision to not say anything, to not respond, to disengage, whether you, whether you realize this or not, the Lord is giving unto you more grace, more strength. So when he does give you the opportunity to speak, and it's not to fight, it's not to argue, but it's to empower. Empower many through his power and by his power and by his spirit. There will be such a level of power that will come from your mouth that it would even cause those who have prayed upon you and who have wished on your downfall and who have said that you would never be nothing and you would never go anywhere, it would cause them to be in such awe of the God that you serve. Not because of anything that you did in the process of pain, but because of what came out by reason of you going through that pain. Oh, hallelujah. He said, hold your peace. And some of you, and th there's this belief today that peace is only found in what you want to do. Saints of God, I will tell you right now. There will be things that God will tell you to do. And when you first hear it, you won't be at peace with it. God says, don't respond. Don't say nothing. But God, he says, don't respond. But God, they, they don't respond. Don't say, and you're like, but I said, don't respond. Lord, the talk I said, don't respond. So peace is not found in what you want to do. Peace is not found in what you want to say. Peace is not found in how your flesh wants to act. It's found in the presence of God. No peace without the Prince of Peace. There's no peace without the Prince of Peace. And that's just the truth. If you say peace is only found, if you believe that you're, you, you're at peace because you're doing what you want to do, then it's an indication to me that you're at peace because you're comfortable. When you're in the, when you're truly in the presence of the Lord, it's a delightful experience. However, there will be things that the Lord Jesus will speak to you and tell you whilst being in his presence that will honestly cause you to say, Lord, but I don't get it. They did me wrong. I didn't do anything to them. And he would say, go apologize. God, I don't understand. They accused me. All I tried to do was love them, forgive them, go to them and bring them a gift. God, I don't get it. They, they, they made the group chat about me 
and they told everybody to stop listening to me and, and, and to stop listening to my teachings. Text them. Tell them how much you love them. And you're there for you're there if they ever need you. Peace is not found. When God says hold your peace. It's not found in what you want to do. God, I don't understand. My spouse, uh, 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 my spouse is doing me wrong. The Lord Jesus may tell you, don't say nothing. Act as if you know nothing. Just pray for them. Silence is uncommon because everybody is talking today. Everybody has something to say. But what about the person that does not have much to say unless giving the opportunity to speak? What about the person that doesn't have much to say, even when they can say something? Silence is powerful because it gives you time to think. It gives you time to look at a situation from a different lens. It gives you time to think on how you're going to respond to something that happened to you. It gives you time to hear what God is saying. Silence is key when you're in pain. It's so key. Imagine, picture this. You're at the gym and you're on a treadmill. And to challenge yourself, you turn up the speed and you increase the incline so that you can become stronger. And the moment your legs become weak and the lactic acid starts to build up in your legs, all of a sudden you just scream to the top of your lungs, I can't do this. This hurts. Everybody's going to look at you like something is wrong with you. Because you're the one that came to the gym. Coming to the gym doesn't mean that you're going to be comfortable. You come to the gym to be in pain for gain. No pain, no gain. So somebody may come to you while you're on that machine and tell you, hey, while you're running, in this last five minutes while you're running, control your breathing, in and out. Every three steps, in, out, in, out. Fix your form, pump your arms, Fix, your, fix your, your feet. Don't have your feet like that. Pick up your knees. They're fixing your, they're telling you to do all of this stuff. But them telling you to do all of that still doesn't cause the pain to just magically disappear. The pain is still there. But now that you have the proper, proper form, The pain is easier to, to cope with, to deal with.
And so now you're at your last five minutes while you're on this treadmill and in your head, you're thinking and you're saying, I got this, push harder, go harder, go harder, pump your, arm, pump your arms harder. And it's no longer about the pain. It's no longer about what you're feeling, but it's about reaching that goal, getting that goal about becoming stronger. It's not about how it feels in the moment. Because as I conclude, I say this last thing. Pain is only temporary. If you had to go on that treadmill for only 10 minutes, every single day, so that you can lose weight, so be it. If you, if you had to lift that weight every single day so that you can become stronger, so be it. Because that pain is only temporary. Pain is temporary. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 to 18 says, For our light affliction, listen to that, our light. In the moment, it seems so heavy. It seems so heavy. It seems unbearable. But it says in 2 Corinthians, I believe this is Apostle Paul. And, oh, I love Apostle Paul. But he says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It's only for a moment. It's only for a moment. Oh, hallelujah. Everything that Job went through. When we read it, when you read about it, I encourage you, if you don't know about the story of Job, I encourage you to go read the story of Job. It's personally my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite book in the Bible, the book of Job. Um, uh, uh, and my second is the book of Revelation. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you read the story of Job, the whole story, it's about what he went through. And then towards the end, it uh, testifies of, of how God took him through and how the Lord blessed him and gave him double for his trouble, what he had to go through and what he had to endure. But when you read it, it sounds like pain. Job was in pain for 20 years. But did you know that Job was only in pain for nine months? And nine is the number for new beginnings, for birthing. You're in your, your mother's tummy, your mother's stomach for nine months and you're being cultivated. You're being uh, 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 developed, you're forming. And then you, she's in the, the labor room and some of your mothers was in pain for 24 hours, 48 hours, however long she was in labor with you. But the time of pain, hallelujah, didn't even equate to the many times that she got to look at you and see your beauty and tuck you in bed every night and make dinner for you and hear you say, oh, mommy, this is so good. So those times where she's tucking you to sleep and she's taking care of you and she's nurturing you and comforting you, it makes up for all the pain that she went through to hold you for nine months and number two, to push you into this earth. So as I continue, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look at not the things which are seen, but, but at the things which are not seen, 
for the things which are seen are temporal. It's temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Pain is temporary. It's so temporary. And do not let something that is so temporary cause you to forget the eternal weight of glory. Make the decision today that rather than looking at pain from the lens of this hurts so much, look at it from the lens of this is helping me so much. This pain is so temporary. It's so temporary. What you're going through right now, it's temporary. It's going to pass. It's not forever. What you're going through in your body, it's not forever. Those, the health issues, it's not forever. Some of you, you prayed, you said, Lord, I want to be a conduit of your healing power. And then all of a sudden stuff starts happening in your body. But little do you realize this very thing, that when God heals you, his healing power has now been deposited inside of you. And now you can go out and heal the sick. You say, God, I want to help marriages. And all of a sudden, stuff just starts happening in your marriage. God, I want to deliver the captives. And all of a sudden, demonic stuff just starts happening all around you. Your family starts acting up and the kids and all, all of this stuff that's demonic just starts happening. And you're trying to make things work. You're trying to make, you're trying to get it to leave. You're trying to get it to go. But the more you do that, people just keep acting up. All of those things that are occurring. Is for you every single time to go to God. And each time you go to the Lord in that time of pain, the Lord is pouring himself into you. As you pour yourself out to him, he's pouring himself into you. You say, Lord, I, I, I just really don't realize what's going on. All, all I asked was to be used. But I didn't realize that me being used means that I'm actually going to be used and taken advantage by people. I didn't realize that this is what I asked for. Lord, all I asked for was to be blessed. But I didn't realize that I would have to go through what I'm going through right now to be blessed. Because when God wants to bless you, he doesn't want the blessing to control you. But he always wants you to be in remembrance of him, the blesser. Imagine us receive the blessing, but forget the blesser. What a shame. Imagine us receive healing, but and healing is flowing through our hands, but we forget where that power comes from in the first place. Imagine us delivering the captives and uh, 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 people are being delivered from evil spirits, demons, demonic things. And then we get all prideful in our head thinking that we actually did it. Like what? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> like seriously. Oh Lord, help us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The purpose of pain is beautiful, saints of God. Okay, we're back. I just got a call. But the purpose of pain is so, so, so beautiful. Embrace it and understand that the Lord Jesus will be glorified through what you're going through. And you will make it out. You will get out of that, that valley of the shadow of death. You will make it out. No pain, 
no gain. The time of pain is the time of gain. The time of pain is the time of glory. The time of pain is a time of elevation. The time of pain is a time of increase. The time of pain is a time of strength. The time of pain is a time of light. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give every single one of you an opportunity to go sow a seed. And when you sow a seed, I want you to give in the number nine, the number nine. That could be 19, 29, 39, 49, 59, 90, uh, 900, whatever it is that the Lord uh, puts in your heart. Uh, let me also put it on Facebook, but whatever it is that the Lord puts in your heart. And the reason I say the number nine is just <clears throat> because the number nine is the number for new birth, new beginnings, new birth. And when a mother, as I just stated, when a mother is, uh, her, her due date comes, it's expected that she was holding that baby for nine months. And those nine months, especially towards the end, was very painful. The labor, the push is painful. But the opportunity to hold life in your hands is such a blessing. And so as you go and sow the seed, I just want you to say, in any opportunity you have to give to the Lord Jesus, any opportunity, some of you may say, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow, or oh, I'm going to do it next week. When you have the opportunity now, you do it now. While it's open now, you do it now. You don't, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to do it another time. I'm going to do it when I can do it. No. So the given information is on the screen now, and I just put it up for you all, and it's already been up on um, on 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 YouTube. And as you go and sow this seed again, just begin to thank the Lord for what it is that you are going through. Thank him for what it is that you are going through. But number two, thank him that he is with you. Say, Lord, I thank you that you are with me. I thank you that you've never left me. I thank you that you have never forsaken me. I thank you, Lord, that you are with me through what I'm going through. People have left me, but you are still there. People have spoken bad things of me, but you, Lord, you still love me. You still care for me. People have shown me who they really are, but God, you've never changed. You are the same yesterday. You are the same today. You're the same forevermore. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. 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 I was actually about to go all the way. <laughs> you see, and I was just giving an example, but I could keep going because I was actually saying that unto the Lord. Amen. <laughs> but, but, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But as you go and sow this seed, just do that very thing. Be in thankfulness in your heart. Have a thankful heart to the Lord. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. And so as you pray and as you go and sow, just be in thankfulness. God, I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my breakthrough. I thank you for my blessing. Lord, this pain is also oh temporary, but that which you have for me is greater than what I'm going through right now. The heavy weight of your eternal glory, God. Lord, Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for it. And just begin to pray and just begin to thank the Lord Jesus. And you will see the great and mighty things that the Lord will do in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. If you are blessed through this live stream, I just want you to say, I was blessed. I was blessed. I was blessed. Amen. Now, right after this live stream, I'm going to go on Instagram and I'm going to do an Instagram live. Amen. 
and and usually I really love my Instagram lives, uh, and especially the people that come on. They usually come on with some interesting questions, and just the audience in itself is very um, open. And so I really appreciate the Lord Jesus for um, that 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 platform. And so um, if 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 you would like to join, go to my Instagram, um, Double Grace M, Double Grace M, and you will see me right there on Instagram. Amen. And so I'm going to be on literally like within the next five minutes. And so go over there on Instagram if you want to be blessed again. Amen. If you want to be blessed again, God bless you, Aaron, Christina on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining on here. I pray that you said you were blessed. So amen. God is good. God is so good. God is good. Well, let me pray, Father. I pray for every single person that has tuned in tonight, whether they came on for three seconds or whether they listened to the whole live stream. Lord, bless them, increase them, and cause your face to shine upon them. May your hand be upon them and your oil and your light be within them. God, I thank you for what it is that they are going through because through what they are going through, you will be glorified. And at the end of the day, at the end of this all, God, that's what really matters. It's you. Lord, I love you. I glorify your holy name. And to every single person that has went to go sow a seed, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you all. As I say, every time I go live, I love you. But remember that the Lord Jesus loves you even more. So much to the point that he died on the cross for you and he rose again the third day. Be blessed in Jesus' name. <laughs>